So hey everybody, it's Mickey, and in today's video, we are counting down your top five favorite Bachelor Life recipes from 2022. So if you are new here, I hope you'll take a minute to subscribe. I put out new videos every week about all things home. I've taken a look at the numbers and it turns out your most favorite Bachelor Life recipes are Crock-Pot recipes. So here are your five favorite 2022 picks. So the recipe that I'm sharing today is an oldie but goodie, and I think I may have shared this one before with you, but it is worth repeating. This is going to be for beef tips and gravy. It is one of our favorite crock pot meals, and it was on the request for the week. Now for this recipe, of course, you're going to need some, um, about two pounds or so of beef stew meat. I have a third package that I'm probably going to be throwing in that as well, so we can make a little bit extra, maybe stick it in the freezer. You're going to need some garlic, cream of mushroom soup, about a cup of beef broth, You'll need a package of brown gravy. Now I also pulled out a package of French onion soup mix, and I think I'm just going to toss that in there for a little bit extra flavor. You're going to need um, one chopped small onion. I'm also going to use a little bit of Mrs. Dash and some black pepper. And then once everything is all cooked, I'm going to use a little bit of corn starch and water um, if I need to thicken up the gravy a little bit. I can't wait for this to get started because it really does make your house smell so good during the day. It gets you so excited and anticipating dinner time. So let's get this all in the crock pot. So we're adding all the beef stew meat to the crock pot. And you wanna make sure that it is spread out as much as possible and then I'm, on top of that, I'm going to put some Mrs. Dash and a little bit of black pepper. Sprinkle in your chopped onion all around. And then we're gonna mix together our gravy ingredients. In this bowl, I have my cream of mushroom soup. I'm also going to add a package of the French onion soup mix and a package of brown gravy. And then I'm going to start whisking this all together to get it, you know, as smooth as I can get it. So I'm gonna add in the beef broth. Now, if it's a little bit lumpy, don't really worry too much about that because that'll all work itself out as it cooks in the crock pot. On top of our stew meat and onions, you're going to go ahead and add your sauce. Make sure you get every last drop of that good stuff. Then you're going to cover, you can cook it on low four to six hours. The way I like to do this is I like to start off the first hour on high about for like an hour or so, and then I will move it back to low and let it cook for another three to four hours. I always check it with a meat thermometer before I serve it just to make sure that everything is up to the proper temperature. So I just added about 15 minutes ago a little bit of corn starch and water to thicken up our sauce a little bit. And it looks like it did its job. So I'm gonna be shutting this off and keeping it here while I get our um, egg noodles and our veggies all ready to go. This recipe is so good, it made a lot. We had leftovers and a little bit to put in the freezer. You can serve this on top of egg noodles like I did today, mashed potatoes, or rice. Either way, I'm sure your family will love it. Fall is the perfect time for a cozy crock pot meal and today's recipe is just so delicious and simple to put together. I know your family's gonna love it. 
We're gonna get started this morning with a crock pot recipe from the crock pot ladies. I'll leave this recipe down below for you. But if you're not familiar with them, they have an awesome website and a cookbook that I use for a lot of the recipes that I share. The recipe today is going to be for chicken cordon bleu that you make all in the crock pot. So for this recipe, you're going to need about two pounds of skinless, boneless chicken breast. Now I've seasoned mine with some salt and pepper, garlic powder, um, Mrs. Dash, some paprika. You're going to need a box of stove top stuffing mix, a can of cream of chicken soup, a few slices of regular deli ham. This is the one that I picked out, but you can choose whatever kind that your family likes. You'll need a cup of milk, a quarter of a cup of water, and about a fourth of a stick of melted butter. For these kinds of recipes, I always like to line my crock pot with one of those Reynolds crock pot liners. You can usually find them in the grocery store, but I have been ordering mine off of Amazon and I'll leave that link down below for you. Pour half of our soup mixture into the bottom of your crock pot. And then we're gonna layer in the chicken. Now since these chicken pieces are a little bit larger, I've cut each of them in half to help them cook a little bit quicker and to make more of an appropriate serving size. Then we layer one piece of ham and one piece of Swiss cheese on each piece of chicken. Then cover the top with the remainder of your chicken soup mix. And then over top of that, you're going to add your package of dry stuffing mix. Then on top of that, you're going to add your fourth of a cup of water and your melted butter. Then we just cover and cook on high for two to three hours or low four to six hours. So it's been about three hours, so let's take the lid off. Whoa, to check the temperature of our chicken and make sure that it is ready to serve. The house smells so great. Everybody is ready to eat. I serve this chicken cordon bleu over some white rice with a side of broccoli. Now this makes a lot of food, so we were able to have a bunch of leftovers and I think that it was even better the next day. I'll be sure to leave this recipe and links to everything that I've mentioned in today's video in the description box down below. We are making a new crock pot recipe today for dinner tonight. We are going to be having orange chicken, rice, and broccoli. This recipe is so simple and full of flavor. And as always, there's always a little room to put your own flair into it. For this recipe, you will need two to three pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. You'll need about a half a cup of barbecue sauce, a cup of orange marmalade, some cornstarch and water that comes in at the end of cooking, one to two tablespoons of soy sauce, and a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. You'll also need a teaspoon of ginger. I don't have it here, but what I also added was about a one fourth of a teaspoon of red pepper flakes and a couple good shakes of some hot sauce. Cut the chicken into small pieces, season with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and place in the bottom of your crock pot. I am using one of those crock pot liners today to make cleanup just a little bit easier because this recipe can be a little bit sticky. 
Mix the remaining ingredients together except for the cornstarch and water and pour over the chicken pieces. Mix well to combine, cover and cook on low for four hours. About a half hour before the end of cooking, take a tablespoon of cornstarch and a tablespoon of water, mix together and pour on top. Mix well and let it cook for another 30 minutes or so to thicken up and your recipe is done. Be sure to check the temperature of your chicken with a meat thermometer to be sure that it has come to the proper temperature. We served it on top of a bed of rice with a side of broccoli. We are going to be trying a new recipe this morning. This recipe is for potato soup. Now, usually when I make potato soup, it's really an investment in time because you have to peel all the potatoes, dice them up really small. And this recipe I thought looked really simple because you can use frozen diced hash browns for this. So I have about a 32 ounce package of hash browns here that I left in my refrigerator last night to let them thaw out a little bit. You're also going to need about a half of a large onion chopped, a block of Philadelphia cream cheese, two cans of chicken broth, a can of cream of chicken soup, and your just regular seasonings, the kind that you like to use. I really like to have a good inventory of soup in my freezer. It's one of those things that you can just pull out. It doesn't take very long for it to thaw out and you have a quick and easy dinner or lunch. So the first thing you want to do is spray your crock pot really well with some non-stick spray. And then we are going to add in our diced hash browns. and then our chopped onion. I'm gonna stir this around just a little bit. And then we're going to add our cream of chicken soup. And our two cans of chicken broth. So I've given this a really good stir and I've added in some black pepper, a little bit of dried ranch mix. I'm also going to add in some garlic powder, some Mrs. Dash, and then just a little sprinkle of some crushed red pepper flakes just to give it just a little bit of heat. So we're gonna mix this all together and we're going to cook it on low for about five hours. I'm going to start it on high for at least an hour and then I'm going to turn it down and we'll see how long it takes. You're going to wanna to cook it until your little diced potatoes are, are really completely soft that they can be stirred in together to make a really nice potato soup consistency. The other ingredient that you're going to be adding is your cream cheese, but we're going to let that sit on the counter for a little while to get nice and soft before we add it. And we're going to add that about a half hour before our soup is done. So it's getting to be just about that time. The soup has been cooking for a couple hours now, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. At this point, you want your potatoes to have like kind of melted away and there's no really big chunks and that's just about where we are now. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to take our cream cheese that I have at room temperature, I'm going to add it to our soup, cook it for another 30 minutes and it should be done. Here's the potato soup, all done. It smells so great. It has a nice creamy texture with little chunks of potato. I've topped it with some cheddar cheese, bacon bits and chives, and it is just perfect for a light dinner or a great lunch. I hope you guys will try this recipe out. I'm gonna list it for you down below. It's super simple and super delicious.
Although this recipe is not from 2022, I wanted to include it in this video because this is by far my most loved crock pot recipe with almost 50,000 likes. This is a special recipe to me because it is my mom's chicken cacciatore. So the first thing you're going to need is about three pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breasts. And you're going to want to salt and pepper them really, really well before you put them in your crock pot. I also like to use garlic powder and Mrs. Dash. Then we're going to slice up two green peppers, two red peppers, a medium onion, and three green zucchinis. So as you get everything all sliced up, you're just going to put it in your crock pot on top of your seasoned chicken. Then crush three large garlic cloves. So this is what your crock pot looks like with all your chopped up vegetables. And now we're gonna mix our spaghetti sauce to go in. So to mix your spaghetti sauce, you're gonna to wanna to get yourself a large bowl, or you can just go and buy um, jarred spaghetti sauce at the grocery store. But since this is my mom's recipe, she always made everything from scratch, and that's usually how I do it too. So you're going to need a 20 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, a six ounce can of tomato paste. Now these are optional, but I really love to use um, roasted red peppers. They really give your sauce a great flavor. So you're going to want to get the ones that are packed in olive oil and just put a few in there. You know, all of this really is to taste because everybody, you know, likes different things in their spaghetti sauce. So this is just how I do it. I add about a teaspoon of salt, a tablespoon of dried parsley, a teaspoon of basil, a half a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of red crushed pepper, and this could really be to taste. And I always put a little bit of sugar in any tomato sauce that I make. I think it adds a sweetness to it and cuts the bitterness. And this could be to taste. You can use a tablespoon, a half a tablespoon, whatever you like. We usually go with a tablespoon and a half a cup of white or rosé wine. I have rosé here. And then you're going to mix it all up. So once your sauce is all mixed up, you're just gonna pour it on top of everything in your crock pot. And then just mix it up with your vegetables. So at this point, it's all ready for your crock pot. You could even prep this the night before and put it in your crock pot the next day or you can put all these ingredients in a big Ziploc bag and freeze it for another time. I like to cook mine for four hours on high, but you can also cook it between six and eight hours on low. So it's been a little bit over four hours and I've turned my crock pot over to warm. So I'm gonna leave the lid off for now while I cook my pasta, cause this will allow the um, sauce to thicken up a little bit. So the pasta that I like to make um, with my chicken cacciatore is gemelli, which is like a little twisted pasta. It's really good. Um, it holds the sauce really well and it stands up to all like the veggies and everything that is in the sauce. So I have my water starting to boil. I'm going to um, make my pasta and then I will plate it up and let you see what it looks like when it's all done. And this is how it looks when it's all done. This is my mom's chicken cacciatore recipe. For all the details, look in the information box down below. I thought by sharing our top five recipes was a great way to start off 2023. I so look forward to all of the decorating, DIYing, organizing, cooking and crafting coming up along the way. Thank you all so much for watching. Please join our communities over on Facebook and Instagram at My Bastrel Life. And don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you all back as part of our 2023 YouTube family. So until I see you in that next video, I hope that you love the life that you have. Be kind to each other, stay safe, and I will see you again soon. Bye.